I think you should just uh, go out and start. Uh, it's a very simple thing to say, but a very hard thing to do. Right? Uh, I remember it was very hard for me. When I started off, my, my parents thought I was becoming a travel agent. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a hard time convincing them that I was not. What I realized, the real joy only and only exists in creating things. There is no other joy because when you set a material goal as your goal, you get there and then you think, now what? Right? I remember I had a goal that I will get a Honda City car when I was uh, uh, just out of my college and I was like, hey, I need to get this car. The moment I got inside the car, I was looking outside, I'm like, hey, I need to get that car. But there were two big learning experiences for me at the fellowship. One was uh, thinking really big. As I told you earlier, for me, uh, very early during the lifetime, because everyone around you pushes you to be so conservative. Yeah, that's true. I almost st started thinking to myself that I want to build a very small hotel thing in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Post that, the belief has been we'll build the world's largest hotel network uh, ever created. And the second thing was, you don't need to emulate something to be successful. We are creating something that doesn't exist in any other part of the world. And today, uh, they're close to 12 companies copying and emulating what Toyo has done here that, yeah. in so many other countries. Yeah. You know, I read this Chinese thing about two years ago, it had a profound impact on me. It, it went something like that the whole joy of life is chasing happiness, right? Yeah. And it went something like, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, get an inheritance. If you want happiness for a lifetime, do something meaningful for others. You know, when you, uh, when you think about impossible, many people, you know, regard it as something that cannot be done. It's just a little further away than what has previously been done. That's about it. Um, so when you're convinced about it, and the problem is the following, if nine people, if you believe in something, and if outside the company, and if nine people agree with you, then there must be some reason this did not work before. But if nine people outside the company do not agree with you, then probably nobody has tried hard enough. Yeah. So uh, those are actually the easier ones to solve for than the ones that everybody knows is going to happen. Actually, this is the lesson is way beyond just international markets. Okay, um, I have a relative who uh, used to be in the army, and I was having a conversation with him, and uh, he told me that the people who die when they are in the army are actually stupid people. Okay. So what they do is they have this romantic view of that this is how wars need to be fought and they just go in the line of fire and start shooting left, right and center. Okay. And then a bullet would hit them and then they're gone. Right? So I think the biggest learning we have from doing all this stuff at the same time is that pick your battles. Right? And um, if you actually run away from a battle which is going to kill you, you might live to fight another day. If you stay in that battle and keep fighting, you'll get killed and then that's, that's the end of the story. People don't move fast on that. Don't move fast on that. They become complacent. Uh -huh. And I think the winner is the one who's paranoid about moving fast. And when you are ready to move fast and you are let, allowed to break things, mm -hmm. and when you put break things first, meaning that it is okay to break things, then people know that it is, the commitment is to move fast. Right. I think my family, my wife was definitely very supportive. Uh, I think she was very clear and she's always been very clear on one thing. Uh, come home happy whatever you're doing. Because if you're not going to come home happy and you're going to come home stressed out, uh, there's a good pressure where you know things are growing and things are great and there's a good pressure, but there's a bad pressure where you're just unhappy. I'm one of those, if I'm unhappy for a week, there's a problem. I mean, I, I get very restless, so I have to figure out why. So I think she had seen that I wasn't enjoying corporate world too much. Uh, she had also seen me working on the business plan and being super excited every night. So post dinner, I would settle down uh, and uh, you know work half the night, and next morning basically tell her you know I slept at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. working and you know share with her what I was doing. So I think she she realized that I was very passionate about what I wanted to do. I think uh, one other uh, uh, big learning uh, that I kind of adopted is. Uh, to allow life to be unfair to you. I think when you are, when you always want the life to be fair to you, you get into a, uh, you live a traumatic life, right? Small things that happen in life. To everybody, life has been unfair. Find a problem that you think is really bothersome and, a very big and in font size 22, and that same problem bothers other people. So if your girlfriend doesn't talk to you, it's not a business problem. 
or you know if you don't like to eat khichdi that's not a business problem but if the canteen mess or if the college's canteen is perpetually serving bad food and you have an idea to give good food to everybody who thinks there's bad food at an affordable price then you have a startup idea so i'm going to end my talk with a small little story since ink is all about stories it's about two gentlemen mr rajat and mr ashok so i met rajat on a plane and he told me the story they both went to iit in the 1980s then they went to harvard business school ashok went on to work for apple rajat went on to work for a big uh, consulting firm rajat recently came down to india for a business meeting his car broke down in calcutta and they took him to this garage and he found that the guy who was repairing the car was ashok rajat was shocked he was like ashok how could you be repairing the car you're the smartest kid i ever knew you you should probably be the ceo of some company then ashok told him his story he said you know what i came i worked for apple for for a few years and i came back to india made a company that increased fuel efficiency sold that and then started this garage because all i really loved was repairing cars with my very own hands rajat was the one telling me the story uh he told me varun i'm 65 years old i'm the vice president of my company my only regret in life is that i didn't live a life that i wanted to live i lived a life that somebody else wanted me to live and all he told me was don't give up on your dreams and for me to do that i think don't think just do thanks <laughs>